So hi everybody, how's it going? This is the Food Talk Podcast, uh, episode two. We're gonna try to make it a little, a little bit better this time. <laughs> I'm Nick. I'm Amelie. What's your name? Amelie. Amelie. There you go. Sorry. It's okay. So we have some. Um, let's bring it up like that. There we go. Oh, thanks. Yep, no problem. And so we'll have uh, some uh, questions from this past week through Reddit and through the channel and um, all that good stuff. So. Yeah. How's it going, Emily? Very good, and good? you? I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. Um, first question, like, we're going to talk about a couple things, but the main thing I've heard this week throughout the, the comments and through uh, Reddit and different uh, avenues is, how would you uh, get better at being a musician and getting better at, like, say, sight reading and rhythm? Like, what are the general things when you're first starting out to try to get yourself a bit ahead as a musician? And um, You're talking about sight reading and rhythm specifically? Yeah, in terms of, yeah, and specifically those, and then also mu basic musicmanship when you're first starting out. Okay. Um, for the flute, the f main thing in the beginning, I would say, is the sound. That's the first thing. Um, then... Like paying attention to the sound? You mean like how would like you having go about a nice the sound because your sound is what uh, is your is the uh, your um, how do you say matière première? You know your it's like what you, it's your material. It's what uh -huh. you use to make your art. Yeah, you use your sound. So if your sound is not, well, it would be some uh, some tools or some tips to, to besides your ears, obviously. You know. Well, we have a couple of videos about embouchure and all those things. I would say um blowing <laughs> all the time like supporting the air for the flute that would be something um and uh, uh to improve your sound you can uh, you want me to explain from the beginning how to have just a good some, sound just some general tips for people who just start out i guess because it sounds like this person is coming from from a uh, beginning background and okay you know you said tone first a little bit, and then let's talk about that. Why not? Yeah, um, because it's a very vast question, so I'm but thinking general. we're going uh, in all in ev every direction. Let's let's start with something else because that's a bit. Uh, oh, for sight reading and rhythm, uh, what are some basic things for people to? Are there any things that you like to? Any books that you like to use, or do you like writing out your own type of rhythms when you were? I like use a French method that's called Marteneau. It's, it's written M-A-R-T-E-N-O-T. -E I don't know if it's easily translatable because he uses words to make the different rhythms. Mm -hmm. um, I know Codile has a good... The Codile method, it's more used in the United States than, than in the French world. Um, and the way he, he teaches rhythm is a bit similar with tata, uh, ti, ti, ta and those types of things. That's not how I learned, because I learned the French way. But the, what makes it good is that uh, for every pulse, they put a little line. Because what makes rhythm difficult is that beginners very often don't, don't use the pulse as a reference. Because the pulse, pulsation, pulse, how do you say? Mm -hmm. Pulsation? The pulse, yeah, the, the, pulse. The, the beat. The beat, the beat is like the content in which you put your other rhythms, and um, so it needs to be it needs to be clear where the. Should I stop? Go ahead. Okay. No, you're good. It needs to be clear <laughs> where the beats are. So visually, it needs to be clear on the part where your beats are, so that you can also physically feel those beats. Let's say um, here, I have that method here. So he puts little lines on every beat. Do you s oh, yeah, we got the audio working now. Sorry, Michael. Oh. Audio works now. <laughs> okay. It should. Tell me if it doesn't work, Michael. Or Michelle. Oh my gosh. Michaela. So we're, <laughs> we're talking about rhythm. Yeah, rhythm. And the fact that you need to always reference to the beat, to the pulse, the boom boom that is steady mm -hmm. and visually you have to see in your part where those beats are so in this method in the Martenot method which is a French method it's this M 
A R T E N O T. He puts little lines in front of where where each beat starts. So you see ta 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 ta, ta. and then mm -hmm. physically you tap the beat. And then this way you really feel it and visually you see where they are. At one point he doesn't put them sometimes anymore so you can mm -hmm. visualize where they should be, you gotcha. know. So I think that's a very good way because this way you learn to use the yeah, to yeah. always have the beat when you read, not just play notes and oh um 16 notes are a bit faster than eight notes then you gotcha. go a bit faster you know beginners do that sometimes mm -hmm. but it's not really exact it's just they go a bit faster than a bit slower and a bit slower but yeah you really need to use the beat so for rhythm that would be the thing to work on so, so i so would that book yeah that, that's a pretty good book if you guys want to freeze frame that later and for the people on the podcast uh, later it's uh yeah the method martino martino yeah. yeah well definitely uh And I know you're writing a new book right now, and that's going to have possibly some stuff like this, I guess, too, which will help. Yeah, in my flute book, I want to have rhythm exercises mm -hmm. as well, because I want it, I want it to be a complete. So with the beginners, when I start, mm -hmm. I teach them rhythm like that, but I also give them sheets with uh, just notes on the... And they read them. Like, I mm -hmm. made one for one of my students here. Where is it? Um, so... For a little girl, it's called Millie. <laughs> I made this, <laughs> and she learns piano. So there's a tre bass clef as well. But if you just look at the treble clef part, you see here. So I just put notes on. Right. Oh yeah, treble clef. Well, it's you a bit see? out of focus, but yeah, we'll. Okay. What the? But I put I put li notes. I try to put notes and make them come back so that the student can can recognize them. Mm -hmm. You know, I put two notes absolutely yeah. and then i put another note and i start by putting only lines and then i put only uh spaces so that visually you can see them quickly mm -hmm. you can see that it's a third you, you go f a f a f a g b g b g b so mm -hmm. you see those intervals because when we read we read we read uh, distances mm -hmm. when you read a g scale you don't read every note you see the distance you see that they're all connected notes and then mm. you uh you just read the first one and the last one you mm. don't read the whole thing uh, is it how you read that's how i read one of the ways sure yeah. yeah so i do it separately rhythm and then that when the kids start to be or the adults as well it's mm -hmm. the same way sometimes i put a metronome So they read the notes C, E, C, E, mm -hmm. G. So they're used to read at a certain pace. Yeah. And then I, I start at 50 and the next week at 60 and then at 72. I, I, I increase the, the, the speed so that their eyes go fa further. You always have to read a bit further than where you are. Yeah, yeah There's a buffer. It's like when you watch videos online, there's a little buffer where it's... Uh, <laughs> You have to read a couple of notes ahead and put it in your short-term memory, you know. <coughs> so that would be uh, for reading. Then you, you put all of it together, of course. But I feel that when you learn it separately, it's more efficient. Mm -hmm. That's my experience. For, well, for sight reading. What about for like, uh, for like the high schooler that wants to be better at their sight reading when they get a band thing, a piece of sheet music, and they they're about to sight read through with the band like what are for some pre uh, pre things you can do like well, etudes those two or things plus etudes a study a, uh, an etude a week so when you say etudes like what's one book that you would uh, recommend that people could find it depends on the level but i really like cavalli cavalli yeah yeah, yeah. cavalli there's three books mm -hmm. i like them they're good they're good studies they're well chosen and what would you they're recommend like one a day or one a week one or a one week. a month oh, one, one a month. week okay. i think yeah, one a week one a week is good Because you can work on it a little bit, but it, incre it increases the way the, the speed of learning. Because sometimes we learn, even in band, uh, conductors they they want their band to uh, do a competition or a concert, so they pick a couple of pieces and then they go. They work a lot on those pieces, so at one point you don't do that much sight reading in band, mm -hmm. even when you have a uh, 
even with the private uh, teacher, sometimes we do a couple of pieces a year, but mm -hmm. we don't do that many. So um, studies are a good way to work on sight reading, but also other things like musicality and uh, and uh, articulation and dynamics, all different mm -hmm. types of things. Um, wow, that's great. Um, there's another question from... Uh, and of course, oh yeah, knowing sorry, your scales and your scales in thirds and your, your arpeggios, because 90% of music is that. So if you know it, then when you see it, you'll recognize it. If you don't know it, you'll have to read each note. Sorry. That's great. <laughs> cool. <laughs> yeah. So our next question is uh, uh, from uh, Reddit as well. Um, the some oh a person they just bought a Yamaha flute. Oh, they bought a Yamaha flute about uh, two and a half years ago, and they just bought a new flute, uh, Pro Six and Nine Five with open hole keys to progress as a next step. Uh, which keys should you uh, unplug first? Like when she has them all plugged, I assume, or he. Um, or should they take all the plugs out right away and force themselves to learn without the plugs inside? So should they, they're yeah, meaning yeah. the holes in the in the two hands, the the two fingers for I think uh, A and G, and then E F D. You know. Hmm. Well. Did you have any ever have any hmm. when you when you first got your open hole flute? Or did you have any plugs in them already? No, no plugs. I think I had plugs, and then I removed uh, all of them except. The one with the ring F -sharp? finger. F sharp, yeah. Yeah, this one I mm -hmm. kept it for a while. F sharp D, whatever you want to call it, yeah, yeah. And then you kept it for a while, okay. Then mm -hmm. I removed it, but I would remove the um, index finger first, then the middle finger, then the ring finger. Why would you? Uh, why would you? Uh, why would you uh, say that? Uh, because I think. I'm curious. Well, because uh, the index finger is easier. Yeah, the index finger is pretty easy. It's yeah. true. So I would start with the easiest. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. Maybe removing all of it at once. I like going back and forth when I learn something. Mm -hmm. So maybe removing everything at once so you can see how your hand is positioned when you're when you're um, uh, <coughs> on the holes, you know? Mm -hmm. So that... Because if you do go one finger at a time, let's say, let's say your fingers are going over. Because sometimes with ho with closed holes, that's what happens. Mm -hmm. People put their fingers like that, and you try to put your you try to put your index finger here. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be comfortable. So, anyways, you'll have to put them all on the on the holes. So maybe I would start by removing the removing them and seeing what's not comfortable probably the ring finger won't be then you keep it there and maybe you try with those two but you'll have to modify your hand position mm -hmm. probably yeah most likely anyway so you that's the first thing i would do mm -hmm. yeah but you can go back and forth you know yeah, if you yeah. realize oh this finger i don't i you can put it back and yeah. try in a week remove it again yeah there's no uh it's not going to sound necessarily better or worse no. with or without them They're, it's really a lot of people can argue, but really, there's a cosmetic. It's just a cosmetic thing. Those holes for the flute. A lot of players also buy handmade flutes that have covered holes, because maybe perhaps they just uh, feel to have it that way. Um, yeah, you go back and forth. Have, uh, Some people have, uh, have plugs on their flutes yeah. and s play very well. Yeah, a lot of people, and it's a lot of people have deal. those things. No, it's not a big deal. Big, big deal at all. So, I would say, like, yeah. Try to practice good hand position, right? Good hand position. Playing like that and like having your fingers over top of the keys, like overlapping. Mm -hmm. Never a good thing for technique. It kind of slows things down. It's more of a nape technique, you know, the yeah. nape. <laughs> yeah, play on absolutely. The <laughs> yeah, it's like more for like bamboo flutes <laughs> yeah. and stuff like that. And like but playing with, with the webbing of your Yeah, the that's not how fingers. we play the... <laughs> no, 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 not at all. So, so yeah, it all depends, but uh, yeah. that's really it. Um, another question is uh, a little bit more on the Baroque side of things. Um, how uh, somebody's going to be starting to play uh, one of box sonatas. Uh, I think it's a Sonata BWV 1038. Yeah. I, I don't know the numbers by heart, but. Um, and they're wondering about uh, if they can use ornamentation and like little trills, um, but nothing drastic um, as they would play when they play Telemann or Vivaldi. 
Uh, are there any advice that you have or tricks uh, for playing Bach in style or in good taste? Um, and they'll be playing on a Baroque flute as well, but this is just basically about style, right? So I know you have a book that you swear about and like... Yeah, it's just there on the on that shelf um, yeah. if you want to show it, but... Sure. Um, I'm Absolutely. really not a Baroque specialist. No, but I mean, like, we've all played... But I mean, we've all played Bach, right? We've all played Bach, and, like, I've had teachers that tell me I shouldn't, you shouldn't ornamentation, and then, or just do the ornamentations that are written in the book, which are written by a person that's alive now or has yeah. recent past. And uh, I think some little things here and there... Like this is a great book. I just want to show that to everybody. Yeah. This is probably one of the best books in history for for Baroque music playing, and it's by uh, Jean Claude Velhan, V E I L H A N. It's by uh, Alphonse Le Duc. It's in French in this one, but I don't know if it's been translated. We should check. I'm, I'm pretty sure it has. I think I've seen a version of it before. Yeah. Probably because it's quite amazing. It's, yeah, it's a. Uh, it's a reference book. You don't have to read cover to cover, but no, whenever no. I play and I'm, oh, what does that mean again? Oh, how should I do this? It's all in yeah. there. Uh, it c talks about, and there's a good, um, you know, you can you can find stuff by subjects here. And there's index, yeah. you know. And listening to like great, uh, or you know, listening to really good Baroque flutists. There are some like Barthold, Keegan, or Quigan. Uh, I never know how to pronounce Quigen, his name. Quigen, Quigen, He's but amazing. Barthold, he, he, listening to him, he's a historian first, uh, really. Oh, and they, and, uh, he can those play people, they know Baroque. Yeah, That's they, 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 play they learn, only. Yeah, they learn that yeah. style and um, but it really can uh, I would really say work. if you want to ornament and it's it's in style, why not? Yeah. Because I wouldn't why would it. we see an editor as competent to choose where to ornament and not yourself mm. and baroque mu musicians used to improvise classical musicians in the baroque ages until classical period improvised everyone improvised people improvised cadenzas people improvised ornamentations composers took for granted that people would improvise an ornament and all those things mm -hmm. And when the, when the Romantic period happened, virtuosity became such a big thing that teachers stopped teaching improvisation because they had to put so much emphasis on technique. Mm -hmm. And we lost the art of improvisation in the classical world. And Baroque it was world, yeah. And Baroque. Baroque like, yeah. I mean, the... the Ornamentating and stuff like that became almost... Yeah. Whole like, I even played Bach for teachers and I, uh, there was no... Not allowed. Yeah. Not allowed. There's a book that I, I like, read what? that's amazing, <laughs> but I think I, I gave it to some, I lent it to someone who never brought it back, so I might rebuy it. It's called, um, I don't remember the, I can't, how do you say plaidoyer, you know? When you, um, plaidoyer pour, uh, it's, it's a German who wrote that book. It's, he talks about how we should all improvise all classical musicians should improvise and that composers are not gods that we should uh, that everyone should improvise and compose that way when we look at a comp composer instead of seeing it as oh it's this unapproachable thing we would see it as a colleague a colleague's music that we're mm -hmm. interpreting in our own way and we, we would feel more free that it's less an ego thing it's more of a sharing thing you know and he talks about how he played once in a concert and one of his friend who was a african musician came to him and told him at the end of the concert it's good but it's not music it's a it's an image of music it's mm -hmm. like a, phot a photography of music what you just did it's not the snapshot nothing is Nothing is uh, spontaneous in what you do. He said, it's as if the, for you, it's not the goat that moves the tail. No, it's no. the tail that moves the goat. You're mm, doing yeah. things in reverse. You're doing things, you know? Mm -hmm. So that book was so inspiring. And I think if it's tasteful and you're 
you know, you're the first question today was how to be a better musician. That's it. Music is about is about communicating and sharing. So that's what we should always keep in mind before rhythm and sound and all those things. It's about communicating and sharing. Mm-hmm. Keeping and in mind, practicing it, and yeah. So if you have, you keep that in mind, and it's an art of uh, of uh, conflict and resolution. You know, that's mainly it. You have, uh, you have, um, how do you call that? Um, c- tension and resolution. Mm-hmm. Tension and resolution, and that's uh, that's where that's what we should emphasize on when we play. Let's go putting emotions and putting who we are because if not, you're just. Yeah, you're right just yeah, exactly. trying to be this perfect person for your teacher or. So that's my opinion about that. So but this book is great yeah, if you want to yeah. have better answers and listening to real Baroque. Yeah, really. Like real yeah. good Baroque musicians. Yeah, Barthel Quigan is or Kigan or Quigan or everyone pronounce it. He's probably the foremost interesting one. But then there's people all around the world that yeah. have made stuff. But like, yeah, my 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 experience for Bach was that, and uh, I only only after did I understand that I could do little things here and there. And but and Bach uh, doesn't need as much as other composers. I would agree. I don't want to mean a lot, but I mean like 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 the person had said in the comment, just here and there, like yeah. very sporadic things. Like there are some places that do like yeah. there's some organ stuff that. I heard organ, Bach on organ, and there's a lot of little flickers. Yeah. Little but sometimes the way he composes, it's almost like he writes. Some the, of them aren't, yeah. Like the one that goes. Yeah. This one, it's, uh, it's almost like he wrote the ornamentation. But in other places, you can add a little something here and there, and it's totally tasteful. Absolutely. Because I've heard very beautiful ornamentations in back. Mm-hmm. Um, somebody also wrote uh, here on uh, the Music 2005 YouTube, or YT, I guess that means YouTube. What is your favorite flute? <laughs> we get that question a lot. My flute. <laughs> yeah, your flute, right? Because I know it. I, I what know are, it. Like, what are some, of the, what are like some of the f- good, most uh, favorite flutes you've ever tried out like throughout your life that you were like, wow, this is a good flute? I try not to try flutes too much because oh, no. I don't have a big budget for that. Um, recently, last year, we had um, we had um, what's his name? Oh, um, at our festival, he came with his flutes, and I tried Lev one. Levitt. Lev Levitt. Yeah, he's based in Boston. Yeah, his he's amazing. Are, his flutes are great. Yeah, he has pretty great flutes, totally. Yeah. I was like, okay, I have to leave now. <laughs> it's too good. Mm-hmm, <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, his flutes are great. I remember trying a Lafayette head joint that I really, really liked. Um, and also, uh, yeah, that's uh, that's in the last few What was years. the other one? A Laffin flute or a, a Laffin head joint? A head joint. I remember trying a head joint. And what are those again? Head joint. Laffin? L A F F I N. Yeah, those yeah. are head joints. Yeah. For the people who don't know what that is, it's just uh, they're f- another flute maker like Yamaha, I guess. Yeah. Okay. They used to be independent. I think now they're owned by uh, Brennan. Am I wrong here? I don't know. I think they are. I they think might they've be. been bought. They might be. They might be. Yeah, but it's a long time ago. I tried this uh, head joint. I liked it a lot. And uh, right now, I'd like to get a wooden head joint. And there's uh, this guy in Montreal. Great who flute makes maker here in Montreal. Very good head uh, joints. Yeah, makes head joints. And he makes also wooden flutes, but and he doesn't make silver reasonable. flutes. <laughs> and I might get one for but Baroque I, music, yeah. all those things. I think it would be interesting. In fact, he has one silver flute he made, actually. He made a silver flute at that. What's his he last a program. name again? Alexandre. Um, La, it's, uh, they're called Lavoie. 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 L A V O I E, I think, and his he actually has a silver flute. He's only made one. He's made one, I think, silver flute, and he made it at a at a at a workshop, I, b- I believe, in the, the United States. And I think he's selling it for only a thousand dollars or something mm-hmm. like that. And it's like a superb flute, and it's model one. 
you know. Mm-hmm. So uh, that's very interesting. That's but his cool. but his head his head joints are pretty cool and they're they're cut pretty well and yeah, pretty amazing. And we're, we're it's growing here, which is really amazing. But there's different flutes for different uh, people and different levels and different budgets and different needs. Right, just like like, the like one, we yeah. did that review lately yeah. for a flute with the. Um, curved head yeah, joint curved for head a joint. kid it's amazing and the flute is very good it's like it, it sounds good in every register if yeah. i was a beginner i would be so happy to have that flute it, it depends what you're looking for absolutely it's and also when you get used to your flute there's this thing you know and i read that um marcel moise when um he lost his flute at one point and he just wanted to get it back because he said no other flute would sound like his because his flute had like the way he blow he blew in his flute made little made the metal work and that his flute sounded like him mm-hmm. and even though he could have had a way better flute he just wanted his flute yeah because yeah well, if he, he was a uh, from what i remember well not of him but like he played a lot apparently like a lot a lot a lot like whenever you didn't see him he was playing a lot so uh probably like the acidity and uh, all that stuff reacted to the inside of the flute and most flutes don't take care of their flutes pretty well so i'm sure he didn't at that point either so i'm sure like eroded in a way to a certain way made the sound yeah and also the way he yeah and the way he the way certain people play just like him they they play a little bit more through and into the flute instead of across of the flute or spinning inside the flute, he had like this type of sound that kind of get the air out as fast as possible. Yeah, type but of everyone sound. finds their own way. I had a, um, I have a um, sankyo, and at one point I found a head joint that I thought was perfect for me because we all have our tendencies, and that head joint helped with the stuff I was not as good with, right. and the stuff I was already good at it. You know, you always have to get a compromise. If your articulation is very good, sometimes your sound will not be as clear or your, or y- you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So that flute was just, that head joint was balancing my, my natural tendencies. Mm-hmm. So maybe that's what you have to look for. Not just what someone else says is the best, but what are your tendencies and what, if you're at that level of looking that deeply into yeah, it. Absolutely. But like, oh, I... My articulations are not that great, but I, my sound is a bit mo- darker. So that head joint brings more light to my sound mm-hmm. and the articulations are a bit clearer. But another head joint that would be amazing for another person that has different characteristics naturally, maybe not a good match for them. Uh, you know what I mean? Uh-huh. It's all. It's Absolutely. like a Harry Potter looking for his wand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's actually uh, that's actually a line that that a lot of flutists say oh a lot. Yeah? yeah, I didn't know that, yeah, but yeah. it's uh, it, it should be it really like is, it's yeah. a logical way to see it. And um, yeah, and uh, another question, but from YouTube now. So those were a lot of questions from Reddit. So if you have guys haven't joined the um, Reddit thing, the whole Reddit thing, Reddit's pretty cool. <laughs> it's a cool place where p- cool people go. <laughs> but um, yeah, our flute, the, the subreddit flute, uh, you guys can go there and people uh, can ask questions there. We, we get questions from there as well. But uh, we have one here from our YouTube channel from Mula Raykar, who uh, just who commented on that five minute video that you just made for Flutus in a Hurry. Mm-hmm, the yeah. little warm up. Yeah, the quick little warm-up. Right, quick warm up. I think it's a pretty cool warm up. I'm glad we did it. Um, he wanted to know, how do you play high notes without blowing hard? Uh, because they, because he can really hear um, the harshness, and the notes are too loud for him when he does it. Yeah, he probably overblows. Like, there can be many reasons why you have to blow very hard in the high register. Um, first, I would say open the mouth in the back of the mouth. Open like, oh, like you have um, an egg or something, and try to open the back of the mouth. And also, I would say, try to um, focus the airstream in a V-shape so that the air hits a specific point, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's more centered, doesn't more centered sound. And um, support. Don't just blow air, just support. And a good thing to practice would be uh, harmonics. 
harmonics help tremendously. But yeah, if you overblow, can I play or it's gonna yeah. be like shh? Like yeah, as long as you don't play right in front. No, I think it should be all right. Okay, so let's say I overblow. I just, it's a bit empty. I just blow air, but there's not much of that going on and my mouth is closed inside and but mm -hmm. if I if I open and then I I try to focus and I support with my belly I try to make it resonate in my head and um yeah, I try to think about it more like this and less like I'm pushing air inside. It's more almost as if the air was going in the opposite direction. Mm -hmm. I know there's air going this way, but that's not how I feel. Mm -hmm. is, it, uh, is it logical? Is it how you do it? And if you do harmonics, you can check the high note video. But Yeah, the high uh, note video. Yeah. Harmonics are basically just a uh, low note and then you overblow it so you can, but overblow. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can do a... Right. And once you, you're able to do like a G like this mm -hmm. and you want to do it here. You release all those fingers to the real fingering. Yeah, and then, Kay. but you try to keep the same feeling physically the same speed of air the same speed of air the same and the, physical and the position of where the air is going yeah, yeah. the same physical you try to memorize the feeling and then because our tendency is yeah because our tendencies tend to be when we play high our body and our association with it without guidance is to stress up mm -hmm. and to do weird things with our lips and weird things with our breath but instead actually it's about playing to the lowest amount like the to play like a pl to play like low notes yeah to trick your brain and your body to be like just play low play low uh speed air but not even low speed air because it it's not necessarily low speed air it's about really the positioning and the body language that's that's you're trying to keep everything loose because when you play low people tend to feel looser when they play low mm -hmm. and it's also easier to play low on the flute generally how it's made but adding those extra tendencies when you get anxious when you're playing those high notes or playing a lot of them yeah because if you, you're you, if you're stressed about playing the note you're gonna you're gonna tense yeah, you're gonna and tense, then uh, the sound will it's yeah, yeah so it's, totally. a, it's a, so it's a, that's my way of thinking about it but those are and ways I, like you said the body and all those things uh, are exactly a, correct as well a good way to practice is, practice it also is to take a note that sounds good for you and then go semitone by semitone higher and try to Blow the same way as that note that sounds good. Don't move too much and go higher and higher mm -hmm. and see how it sounds. And try to keep the same sound quality as you had on that note that you think sounds so good. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, there doesn't need to be a big movement here. It's basically just in low register. Oh, oh, you can feel in your belly. And it's just, it's the same thing on your flute. You, you go, oh, with that everything going up mm -hmm. and ah, that's so, it yeah okay so we have some yeah that's that's it uh so we have a few more minutes um michael or mikhail i hope it's pronounced right mendez he considers himself a intermediate student uh is it possible with 27 years of being a 27 year old to start studying hard and become a professional classical musician with the right instructions i'll say yes i think so yeah why not? I even think so. I, I, I would say it completely. I knew a person who was 32 years old who had no flute experience whatsoever, not even in music, a uh, European guy, and he went to conservatory. Uh, three years later, he had an orchestra job. Guy worked hard, and he could he did it. So anything is possible. Yeah. I think any age people can start. Uh, even a, there's a famous London Symphony Orchestra guy, too, that did the same thing. He was in his 30s. And he started, and he made it to play in the... He was in the circuit for London Symphony Orchestra and played with the London Symphony for a long time. If you have the right instruction and you work hard... Yeah. Yeah. I Maybe a passion for not. it and you have a good joy towards it and you want to make a living out of it. It's a lot of hard work, but it's possible at any it's age. It's a lot of hard work for anyone, any absolutely, age. Absolutely, at any so age, yeah, absolutely. But the dexterity and stuff can be built if you're conscious and yeah. stuff. I think it can. Because really, I think 
we overdo that thing of we have to start young maybe mm -hmm. it's for some instruments i don't think so for the flute because i don't know you know if if in your body you already have uh rhythm mm -hmm. and you already have a good ear then you just need to train it but really the ta it's already in you yeah music is not something that comes can from be attained no, music in, in all of us it's, it's inside so you're just developing it yeah. And uh, not because you didn't play an instrument or you didn't play this instrument yeah. means you don't have music inside you because when you were dancing and singing as a child, you were already developing music inside you. Yeah. That's yeah. Uh, and uh, memorizing melodies and all those things. Yeah. Then and you're just yeah. learning fingerings and absolutely technique of the flute and yeah and you can find a teacher anyway you can find a teacher at your local conservatory you can find a teacher online uh online teaching is totally fine too to uh to to a long extent um and there's also programs and stuff but like i would definitely yeah there's yeah. a lot of people who i know practice privately their whole lives and yeah. still manage to go and have a very uh yeah. thoughtful and successful career so it's totally possible i would say that also summer programs are quite interesting oh, yeah. summer programs are really amazing because you can meet different teachers and it's very um condensed so you learn a yeah, lot in a little a lot. bit of time and you hear other people and you hear the teacher giving advice to other people yeah. then it you know it goes through your a mind lot of things and work then yeah. you have a whole year to i remember to rest let it rest yeah. and settle <laughs> but i remember doing a two-week program and coming back to my teacher and he was like what you you improved as much as during a whole year yeah during a whole year of sessions of university yeah, yeah that happens a lot for a lot of people like wow you know? i love i always uh, encourage uh, festivals festivals or workshops yeah. they're always very full of information and um if you manage to play in the class, it's helpful too in many ways too. And record yourself, record, try to record it if you're allowed to record those things, so you can have them as a back backup for mm -hmm. your because rereading things after also helps as well. So yeah, um, thanks for that question. It was a great question. Um, are there like Leo Tex is asking? Are there any good websites or books for sheet music to play along with a guitar? I would say Flute Tunes might have a couple things. FluteTunes.com, we partner with them. Um, I don't know if they have stuff with guitar. I, I'm not sure, but IMSLP, which is uh, IMSLP.org, that is a website that's full of a lot of old music, and there is still, I think there is some old music that has been written for flute and guitar from the 18th and 19th century that are easy and normal and fun. Um, but websites, finding stuff, I think that's your best bet, imslp.org. Do, do you want um, just the music or you want a track to play along with? Yeah, do you want a track or do you want sheet music? I think you want sheets because it's a good website or books. There's a there's a good – you have a couple good books. I have uh, a couple of books. There's a lot of good guitar and flute and guitar oh, books. Yeah. Oh, so many. And um, Fluteworld.com also Because I used to do them. weddings Fluteworld. with a guitar player, like yeah, flute and guitar. Yeah, it's guitar. very good. There's a lot of books for wedding music. Yeah, wedding music. And yeah. all the classics. Yeah, and some of them guitar. even have tablature. Do you say yeah, tablature? Yeah, tablature. Yeah, tablature. They have both yes. like the normal, <laughs> normal yeah. uh, um, way of writing, <laughs> you know, and then the tablature. So. Yeah, there's a lot of that stuff. Um, yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of that. Yeah, There's so much. Here. There's so many. Fluteworld.com definitely can oh, yeah. be one of the Flute World definitely has uh Flute and guitar. Flute and guitar stuff. Fluteworld.com. Uh they're there's the best for that, I guess. There's uh, Amazon has stuff too. Freescores.com. Yeah, sometimes free scores you find is okay. Stuff, but sometimes it's it's hard to search. Oh yeah, you super hard to search. The, but sometimes you can find stuff. But IMSLP is really quite good. They have a lot of old stuff. It's if you can if you're based in the United States it might be a little tough, but it should be okay still, like to use. Um because uh, he plays the guitar and flute and loves playing both. Ah, okay, so you love playing both. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, you can there's so much of those types of things. There's a there's one called the Rosewood book. The Rosewood oh, book. Oh yeah, that's one of them. That's I like have it's not one. one of the best ones in the world, is the yeah. Rosewood book flute and guitar book that's a really really great book to go and run through and play with uh emily's gonna go and look for it just now and yeah um 
There's also like you know the there's also I mean thirty duets yeah thirty duets for the rose guitar and flute. yeah the rosewood flute book that's a great great book um, you have all the big uh, classics yeah a lot of the classics a lot of stuff like that there's also um, you know the standard you know Piazzolla books like the Piazzolla history of tango you can that would be something you can like if you wanted to like play your guitar well, part and then play flute cool. over it that's pretty cool. Yeah, it's a great book. Yeah. It has all the... You have Gymnopédie. Yeah, you have Sati. You have all types of stuff. And it's actually Here. all very good. You have Ravel. Da, 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 and they're very, very, very da, 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 well uh, well written out and well... Um, yeah. So, yeah, the Rose Book. The Rosewood Book. The Swan. All those things. Oh, he says, thanks so much. Uh, your channel helped me a lot when I started playing the flute. Oh, that's nice. Well, that we're very... Happy that that worked out for you. you. Yeah, <laughs> I hope you come back to it more because we have more stuff coming up, and uh, mm -hmm. it's gonna be pretty exciting. And I think that will be it for the rest of the questions for this time. So we're gonna try to do this at least twice a month. Um, this will be the first podcast that will actually be on iTunes, so you can check that out on our iTunes uh, page. We'll put out information on that in the description below a little bit later this week. And uh, yeah, so I hope you guys had a wonderful time. And we will uh, talk to you guys later. This is Nick. And Amelie. And we will talk to you guys next time. See ya. See you.